Well, hello there, everyone. It is Chad. I am back. I am so sorry for those of you who have been sending me emails over the past few months wondering where I've been and why I haven't been posting anything on this page. It's because I've been working on something else. My, uh, I've got a course called App CEO Entrepreneurial Skills for the Trades that I'm teaching at BCIT. So that's been taking up a ton of my time. But I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. I appreciate you checking in and the feedback. So I thought I would just throw together another one. Now, I'm just going to get right to it. Make sure that you're checking out the page www.theelectricacademy.com. That goes without saying. I also want to make sure that you guys are going to that Learn More tab on this page. So if you hit that Learn More tab, you're going to get a free little PDF that I put together of online resources. So you want to check that out. And you also want to make sure you check out my YouTube channel because I've got videos there that I do post and I have been posting a few. I haven't posted a couple for, for the past month or two, but I'm posting more. So these little Facebook Live videos that I do generally get posted there as well. So you want to go over there and check it out and subscribe. All right, so this week, what I want to talk to you guys about, I'm just going to get into it. We don't need to talk about what's going on in our lives and your lives and all that fun stuff. So what I want to talk about this week is power factor correction. I just went through this with a bunch of my students. There's they've There's been a little confusion on some things, so I put together a little keynote presentation that I took them through, and I thought, what the heck, I'll share it with you guys as well. So let's take a look at it. Let me just call you guys up to my screen. So there you go. I'm going to go with this. I'm going to play the slideshow, and here we go. So I'm starting with power factor correction. So what I've got going on here, if I can see where my mouse is, there it is. I've got three loads. I've got a motor A, motor B, and motor C, and they're all in parallel with each other. What we're going to do is we're going to try to take this guy, this capacitor, and we're going to try to improve our power factor. And as I go through this presentation, I'll show you guys why I think it's important that we improve our power factor. So here, I've given these loads some some uh, characteristics. Load A, I'm saying, is 4.7 kilowatts with a power factor of 56%. Load B is 13 kilowatts with an angle of 60 degrees. We'll talk about that in a second. And we've got a load C that's got 21 K bar with an angle of 45 degrees. And I haven't given you anything to do with the capacitor yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what this overall circuit is with these loads. So my first thing that I tell all my classes to do when I do this is draw triangles underneath the load. So I've got triangle A, triangle B, and triangle C. From there, I can put all my information is because when I talk about this stuff, and you can go over to my YouTube channel, and if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go over and check out all the videos I have on this, but I go into greater detail as to why triangles are so very important, but trust me when I say that you want to get these triangles drawn. So I put in the characteristics of each triangle. Let's take a look at it here. So load A, I've got 4.7 kilowatts. Kilowatts always go on the bottom, so they're always going there. Then what I do is I take the power factor, which is generally going to be right in this area here, and I take 4.7 divided by the power factor to get my KVA of that load. Then I use Pythagoras to go that squared minus that squared gives me the square root of this, which gives me the 7K bar. Now you notice that I don't put the KVA there. I don't do that intentionally because I don't want to get confused and end up adding it in to make my one triangle to rule them all, which I'll show you in a sec. What you do need to know is your kilowatts and your K bars for each load. You do not need to know the KVA for each load. All right, trust me. So that's that. Now, second one, I do the same thing, except with this angle, the 60 degrees, what I do is I go 13 kilowatts divided by the cosine of 60 degrees, which will get me this KVA, and then KVA squared minus a kilowatt squared gives me K bar squared. So using Pythagoras again. Remember that angle, your phase angle, and your power factor are completely connected. So if you take the phase angle and you cosine it, you're going to get your power factor. If you take the power factor and inverse cosine that, you're going to get the angle. All right, so that's that. See here, I had 21 K bar. It's an angle of 45 degrees. The nice thing about 45 degrees is you know that each side is going to be the same. So 21 K bar, you get 21 kilowatts. The next step I got to take here is I've got to add up all my likes. So you can see that I've got my kilowatts. They're all heading the same direction, right? They're all in the bottom of the triangle. So what I can do is I can add up all three of these to get the total kilowatts of this circuit. 
I can also add up the k bars. I can add up this k bar plus this k bar plus this k bar over here to get the total k bars of this circuit. And then I do, I take this, these three triangles and I create one triangle that rules them all. So by adding all those up, I ended up with 38.7 kilowatts and I ended up with a total of 50.5 k bar and then using Pythagoras, just going 38.7 squared plus 50.5 squared gives me the square root of 63.6 kVA. So that's my overall of kVA of the circuit. It's important that we use this kVA because this is my voltage amps, my apparent power. This is where we get our current from. So I'm going to take 63.6 kVA and I'm going to divide it by 600 volts and that will give me my overall current in this circuit, which is 106 amps, which isn't that great. We got high current. We're going to get rid of that current. We're going to bring it down quite a bit in a second here. Then I can figure out what my power factor of the total circuit is just by going 38.7 divided by 63.6, and then I inverse cosine that, and that will give me my angle. Or I can just go 38.7 divided by 63.6, and that will give me my power factor for the whole circuit. All right, so let's take a look here. That gives me a power factor of 61% lagging. So we say it's lagging because it's a mostly inductive circuit, meaning that the current lags the voltage. All right, so there we go. That is the circuit as we have right now. So we don't like this so much because 61% power factor is pretty bad. Your utility company is going to be charging you a huge premium for that. So we want to fix that. How do we fix it? We throw in a capacitor over here. So let's just say the power company comes along and says, hey guys, 61%, really? Fix it. We want you to be at 90%. So we need to get a power factor capacitor that is going to take this and bring it down to 90%. Now, we have to remember that capacitors, capacitance and inductance are 180 degrees out of phase with each other. So what we need to do is we need to figure out a size of capacitor here that is going to push these K bars down. All right. So what I do is this with my students. I get them to take the triangle that we just worked out, the one triangle to rule them all. And I say, okay, this is the triangle we have. Okay, this is the triangle we have. But we have another triangle is the triangle we want. That's this skinny triangle over here because what we want to do is our power factor, while it gets greater, the angle gets smaller because we're trying to push these K bars down. If we push these K bars down, this angle gets smaller in here. Am I right? And if you get, push these down, this angle gets smaller. This KVA gets smaller. So we have to remember the one thing that doesn't change in the power triangle we, I just talked about it. We see that this can get cha this changes, and if this changes, this changes. The one thing that remains constant is going to be your kilowatts. So we can take those kilowatts over and put it into the triangle that we want. It's the actual work being done. So we take the 38.7 kilowatts over to the triangle we want. We also know that we want this triangle to be at a 90% power factor, or 0.9. So what we do then is I have 38.7 kilowatts. I have 0.9 for my power factor in here. I'll just go 38.7 divided by 0.9 will give me my new KVA. Pretty cool, hey? Then I take that KVA squared minus my kilowatt squared and I get my K bar. So let's see what that looks like. So I've got 38.7 kilowatts divided by 0.9 or 90% power factor. I end up with 43 KVA. 43 squared minus 38.7 squared gives me 18.7 K bar. So again, this is the triangle we have. This is the triangle that we want. Now, if we put that proper size capacitor in here, which I will talk about in a second, then this triangle that we want becomes the triangle that we have. All right, this is the one we had. This is what we want. We put the new capacitor in, and this now becomes the power factor that we have. Or sorry, the triangle that we have. So my amps over here, this 106 amps, those are going to change. And we know that that power factor definitely changes. So let's take a look at that. I take 43,000 and divide it by 600 volts and I get 71.6 amps. The machines are doing exactly what they were supposed to do before. They're, nothing's changed. You don't hear machines speeding up or slowing down, but my current has dropped drastically. That's huge, 71.6. And we also know that we already told you that we had a 90% power factor. 
So that's awesome. But how do we decide what size capacitor we need to do that? Well, let's take a look over here. We have a 50.5 kVar capacitor. We want it to be down to, or sorry, not 50. We have a 50.5 kVar of wattless power or of inductive power. We want it to be down to 18.7, so we need to get rid of, we need to push it down from 50.5 to 18.7. How do we do that? We take 50.5 and we subtract 18.7, and therefore this capacitor here has to end up being 31.8 kVar. And that's it. There's no, it's not a huge rocket science formula. It's actually quite easy to deal with. Let me just get you back with uh, me on the screen here. So that's how we work out our power factor correction with this. It's not hard. You just need to get with the triangle method. I find that the triangle method helps so very much. It makes it a way easier to deal with. And uh, some guys use charts and all that. I find that can be quite confusing. But if you get the triangles down, you can get each, three tri each triangle for each load. You know that you can always add your kilowatts. You can always add your bars. You can never add your KVA on the individual triangles. Remember that. Then you make one triangle to rule them all. You end up with the triangle that you have. Then you calculate what the triangle that you want, and away you go. So that's how we uh, we work this. Now I'm just trying to get this program to work. It's been a while since I've done one of these that I can't remember how I use this Ecamm Live program that I've I've been using to uh, do these little lessons. All right, guys, that's it. I just wanted to quickly go through power factor correction. If there's anything you would like to see, please feel free. You can email me at chad at theelectricacademy.com or you can Facebook me. Just go to the Electric Academy uh, Facebook page. I've got another one coming I'm working on for motor control, which is just basically how an 8-pin and an 11-pin relay work and how to wire those up properly. I've had a few people actually ask me about that one, so it's it's out there. And away we go. So if you guys have any other issues or questions let me know thanks arvind it's good to be back um i would love to help out i know some of you guys are approaching third year so you've got some three phase questions make sure i've got a bunch of three phase stuff starting to pop up onto youtube go over to the electric academy youtube channel and it should be in there for you all right have a great week i will try to do another one of these next week again eight pin 11 pin relays how do you wire them up have a great week guys we'll talk to you later